It is an honor to join you in commemorating the life and legacy of Ed Ziegler. Ed was a mentor, teacher, and friend. His work has been inspirational to me and many others in our field, and his profound influence extends well beyond psychology. For me, he set an example of how science and policy can join hands to benefit the lives of many. Ed mobilized science in the service of the public interest. I uh, was a poor child. That's why I became so interested in the Head Start program. I actually had my own Head Start program. My, uh, my parents uh, were immigrants. English was not my first language. But back in those days, and to this day, there's a phenomenon in this country that we call settlement houses, like the Henry Settlement House in New York City. And these settlement houses, were actually terrific. They helped enculturate uh, these families into the country. Ed talked about his childhood in Kansas City, and he talked about being the child of immigrants and being poor and growing up really in a rough and tumble world and how that prepared him for his work and really inspired him to do the work that he did later in life. And, and he also talked about what a good street fighter he was and how that was necessary in the world in which he grew up in. We went to Woodland. It was a demonstration school. It was hooked to the Kansas City Teachers College. Reading, uh, interest in the community, community services, all of those kinds of things were part of our curriculum and were very natural to us. Ed invited me to have a beer with one of his sisters, Maureen Argon, who was an interior decorator living in the Kansas City area. They called him Eddie. It was a reminder that Ed was a, a human being in addition to being a titan of early childhood education. I don't think my dad would have accomplished half of what he accomplished if it were not for my mom. She was a remarkable, smart, funny woman who had to have the patience of Job to be married to my dad. I used to play, uh, you know, uh, no limit poker when I was a young man. I quit college once to go to uh, New Orleans and become a professional poker player. I didn't last down there long either. But uh, the game we had in the department, I beat these guys for like 30 years. He taught me to gamble very young, taught me how to gamble, play poker, play blackjack, shoot craps, bet on sports. When Ed served in Korea, he won enough money to buy his parents their first home. He won all the time there, so he stopped playing poker. The challenge was gone. Plus, he felt guilty taking money from his comrades payday after payday. He broke his fast just once, shortly before discharge. He played the camp's pharmacist, with the stakes being the seasickness pills he needed for the long voyage home. He won. But yeah, I'm a very good poker player. Taught my son when he was about four. He's a good poker player now. He did give us all a strong sense of the importance of social justice and the importance of taking care of those people in society whose society otherwise seemed to want to overlook. He loved poker, but I, I think in many ways he was a poker player in just about everything that he did. He realized that that part of it is about the cards that you're dealt, and part of it's about the things that you know, but the bigger part of the game really is about the relationships that you have with other people. Your ability to be able to read what somebody else is going to be able to give you, and to take a compromise when you can, and some of the times know that it's time to walk away from the game. Ed Ziegler had an amazing ability to work across sectors. He and several of his colleagues from various disciplines established the field of child development and social policy. He and I co-authored the first two graduate textbooks that defined the field. I'm extremely thankful on so many levels for Ed Ziegler's impact. Of course, he's one of the most impactful psychologists of the last 100 years, um, really making an extraordinary transition from mastering and contributing to basic developmental science and then moving to applied developmental science and essentially creating the field of child development and public policy. 
the field of intellectual disability owes its origins to Dr. Ed Ziegler and the work of the Special Olympics movement. Uh, you know, my mom, the founder uh, of the Special Olympics movement, was always indebted to Ed, always uh, throughout her life and called on him frequently to ask for advice on the design of programs, the evaluation of programs, how to promote and explain to policymakers the value of these kinds of interventions. 